Hearts yesterday, polka dots today. I'm just a pattern shirt type of gal. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson and I am the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps. It's been probably two years since I've said that intro line. Today we're gonna to be making a fishbowl soap. Now I was heavily inspired by Corinne from Threadbanger and bless her heart, her fish in a bag soaps are just, I know she tried, I know she did her best, but she's not a soap maker and I am. So maybe I could help her out and improve upon her design a little bit. The first thing that we're gonna do is avoid the bag completely. I like the fish in the bag idea but practically really really hard to get that fish to stay up and down and look like it's swimming instead of floating like dead. So we're going to do like a fish bowl soap and that's going to help us create a soap that has the fish actually look like it's swimming. We're going to put some little decorations in there. We're going to have some sand on the bottom. It's going to be great. It's really 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 easy to do. So thanks Corinne very much for the idea. Hopefully this video could help you with your next fish inspired soap. <laughs> if you aren't following me on Instagram, I have two. One for my soapy creations, one for my personal life. If you want to follow either account, that's cool, and if not, that's cool too. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is mix up our cold process part of the soap today. So in here we have some strawberry seeds, some apricot seeds, and some black walnut shells. That's going to give it the sort of gritty texture at the bottom of the fish bowl. And then for the fragrance today, we're we're going to be using Ocean Rain. So before I blend the lye water solution in, I'm going to blend in all the additives. Awesome, now we are going to pour in our little bit of lye water solution. Believe it or not, this is how much soap I used to make at one time. When I first learned how, that's all I made was 16 ounces of oils. Little bitty baby one pound batches. So let's blend the lye water into the oil now. Awesome, that looks perfect. Using the mold that I got from Amazon, I'll leave you guys a link in the description below, I have marked it at two inches using a teeny tiny bit of mica mixed with vodka. That's so I can remove my markings later. So I'm just gonna pour in the bottom of our fish bowl. I figured we might have a little bit left. And I might texture it a little bit. I also might add a little bit to the side. I don't know, I haven't quite decided how exactly I'm gonna keep that part. I think I'm gonna at least try to smish some up on the sides here. It's not holding very well, but that's okay because I'm really just trying to kind of coat the sides a little bit. Now I'm going to add these hand molded pieces of seaweed that I created using Sorcery Soap Dough. I bought the soap dough at SorcerySoap.com. B is a soap making friend of mine. I absolutely love her. She just put a new book out. So if you're interested in molding soap dough, which is very, very similar to molding polymer clay, making cool shapes. You can do so many cool things with it. She highlights a ton of that stuff in her new book. I've personally read the whole thing. I love it. I highly recommend it. It's really good for people who are wanting to do it and also just people who are kind of interested in saponification and the cold process soap making in general. So I'm going to leave her link to her book down below. And then I'm going to place my little embeds here in the soap. I'm not putting them in the same spot in every soap. I am kind of moving them around. For the ones that are a little smaller, I have a, an extra one to throw in there. Now I'm gonna put the little baby seaweed in there. Okay, cool. So now that all the seaweed pieces are in, I'm going to melt down my water and we're gonna put a little of that in before adding the fishy on top. All right, so let me tell you what I have in this bucket. I have one drop of blowout blue liquid colorant. I have two pounds of super clear melt and pour from WSP. And I have the ocean rain fragrance from WSP. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour in very gently, very slowly my melt and pour here until we're about halfway there. I'm pouring slowly to avoid as many air bubbles as I can. A few have been created, but we're just gonna spritz that with rubbing alcohol 
They will all go away. It should look basically like glass. The little fish that I'm putting in are little plastic toys. They are from WSP. If I tried to put them into the liquid right now, it absolutely would not work. They would sink right to the bottom. So I have to wait until this thickens up a little bit before I can gently place them on top so they look like they're swimming in the water. Now, for this part of the video, I'm gonna have to film a voiceover <laughs> because I didn't talk the whole time. I was pretty distracted with what I was doing. So I essentially just waited like 10 minutes or so. I melted down some more clear melt and pour and spritzed it. And then I started putting in the little fishies. So I'm essentially using that melt and pour as a glue to the top of the soap. I'm just trying to make sure that the fish doesn't fall over. And I'm trying to spritz with alcohol between every single layer because whenever you pour melt and pour in, it tends to have those little bitty bubbles surround it. And if you want all of the soap to look like it was poured in one layer, even though it wasn't. You need to make sure that it's very seamless and bubbles really distract and draw attention to the fact that it was poured in multiple layers. So keep spritzing and spritzing and spritzing. And then finally, before letting the soap harden and set up overnight, I'm just gonna take a toothpick and I kind of wiped it across the very top layer and grabbed the film that is being created on top, spritzing and spritzing and spritzing some more, and we're finally ready for it to set up overnight. It's a really easy soap to unmold. The fragrance oil that we used made that cold process part really hard. And as you can see, it looks really cool in a loaf. Okay, so I am back to cut this soap. Hmm. I have this melt and pour soap cutter. This is from Maple Leaf Soap Shop. And I'm just going to kind of cut randomly, I guess. I had a general idea of how big I wanted these bars to be, but. So when you use a wire cutter on melt and pour, it's gonna make this funny little texture on it. That looks really cool though, by the way. You can see here that it, it looks kind of gritty instead of being nice and smooth. So I'm gonna clean that off real quick. So essentially all I did to kind of clean that off was to get it wet and then I will wipe it down and let it air dry. So this is what the fishy soap looks like. It has a bit of a blue tint. Sorry, I'm making bubbles with my wet hands on the soap here, but you can definitely see the fish from all sides. I'm loving the look of the little like sand at the bottom. And then you can see my little sorcery soap dough bits in there. Um, I, I am so thrilled with this. It's definitely a great alternative to the fish in the bag soap, which seems to go wrong for so many people. This is a great way to get the fish to actually kind of stay up where it's supposed to go. There's this little one. And I love having the peace of mind that it isn't gonna break the wire cutter. So I put a little water in my pitcher that I had the melt and pour in because I wanted to show you guys just how much better this soap looks like after having water put on it. You can see that really helps the clarity a whole bunch. This is what I do to my clear melt and pour soaps that are supposed to be sort of a novelty item like this as I always rinse them down with water because it just really helps the visibility of it. And then it's really funny because after you do that once, like the visibility never disappears again. It just kind of stays that way. And then I just set it down on something to let it air dry. So I'm gonna set that off to the side and I'll show you guys, this is the lather that it makes. Lathers pretty well, especially for a melt and pour soap. I'm gonna clean the little green one that I have here. It is good to not rinse it off and then leave bubbles on it like this though, because those bubbles will eventually kind of pop and make a mark on the soap. So it's good to have it like completely flat, no bubbles on it. I'm still on the hunt for a melt and pour soap base that I feel is even clearer than this because this one, while it's pretty clear, it's still a little foggy in there, and I didn't add as much fragrance oil as the Melt and Pour base said it could handle because I know that the fragrance oil often adds to messing up the clarity, and it's it's plenty strong, but I'm still looking for a Melt and Pour soap base that I think looks like glass. So if you have any recommendations, soap makers out there, that you found, I'd love to hear them. 
The question of the day is, did you have a fish as a pet when you were a kid at any point in time? I actually did not. I had a fish, I think the first ones that I got in a really big tank um, was when I was about 18, 19-ish, which I don't really count as kid. Kid would probably be like, I don't know, 18 and younger. To vote in the question of the day, simply click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. I hope you guys absolutely loved this project. Like I said, it's actually really not that hard to do. A little bit time intensive if you're trying to get all the bubbles out of the melt and pour. Also, if you wanna use melt and pour for the bottom of the soap, you can. If you're gonna put decorations in it, you would have to glue them on a little bit, put a little melt and pour at the end, kinda of stick it in there. It'd be really easy. I just like cold process because it's a lot more malleable, a lot easier to manipulate, but some people are gonna wanna make this project and not get anywhere close to sodium hydroxide so I'm just letting you know it can definitely be done with melt and pour only these soaps are gonna be available to purchase there are obviously an extremely limited quantity of them but they'll still be available on August 6th 8 p.m. Central Standard Time with all of the rest of the soaping creations that we are creating in the month of July don't forget I have videos coming up until Thursday so we still have three more days to go so I'll see you guys tomorrow hope you have an absolutely royal day Do do something for yourself today. Do something that makes you happy and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.